Hey everyone, it's DC here, and today I wanted to talk to you about managed service providers. Crazy! <laughs> Just yesterday um, that I mentioned MSPs as um, two of the jobs that I had progressing through my career and I wanted to expand on um, why I think MSPs and working at an MSP is uh, quite important and a really good resource for picking up uh, certs and experience. First off, uh, MSPs are managed service providers. Um, basically they cover heaps of different technologies over a huge range of different types of clients, which is kind of cool. It's a very high strung environment and you're essentially you're going to be working on a, a help desk, taking calls and completing tickets. And um, you have to close a certain amount of tickets each day to reach your daily goal. Otherwise your job may be at risk. There's no shortage of work, so you don't need to stress about that so much. It's more, you just have to get your billable hours in to uh, pay off more than what you're actually costing the company to, to have. So you are essentially a resource in the, the purest of sense. You're a resource to complete a task to make money for that business. Now, while that sounds pretty harsh and it is, um, it's also a really good way to learn because you have to. Some people do really good at MSPs. I did quite well at an MSP because I, I really like that sort of environment of you know, high overturn work and um, taking calls and lots of multitasking basically. So you're closing tickets, you're organizing your day, you're painting it green, which is essentially starting from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. And um, you just put in different uh, jobs that you're going to do that day and that's called painting it green. And you, you paint your day green and yeah, just make lots of money for that company and they'll love you for it. One of the reasons I, I really enjoy working at these sort of places and why I recommend it to people who are starting out is because MSPs tend to take pretty much anyone off the street uh, with you know the minimum certifications and they'll um, help you to learn different skills from different size companies. An example of this is when I first started an MSP, I had a CCNA, a degree and two diplomas, um, and I had no other certifications. I didn't have an MCSE or MCSA or any, any Microsoft certs or firewall certs or anything. One of my first jobs there was um, back when BPOS was a system. It was before Office 365. I'm showing my age. It was a migration project. I wasn't on the project team, but I was just one of the staff there um, looking after taking calls and assisting with that project. And it was um, it was very tough. I had no idea what I was doing, essentially. So I had to learn on the spot. The guys there were very helpful and you know did sort of help me along. And yeah, they, they ended up certifying me. Uh, they gave me my first certification at this place was as a MCSA. Uh, or MCSE, I can't remember now. Yeah, that was that was a really good experience to sort of have, and it it sort of it really stood out as um, a community type organisation where you essentially are part of this team, and you have to be a really good team player. And you can bounce your ideas off them. You can help other guys. They will and can help you. And yeah, you just get stuff done. It's it's really fun. There is that team aspect of it, which is really important and something definitely worth having as an experience. Um, and other places that you go for jobs in later on will ask you, how do you work in a team? And you can then say, well, at this managed service provider, I was in a team of six on the uh, this project and we, we did this we did this project and this was the outcome and it all went well and blah, blah, blah. Having access to multiple technologies across different size organizations and different industries um, is a, a really good way to learn. The other reason I really like MSPs is because they often help pay for your certification. So as I said before, um, they helped pay for my MCSE or MCSA, I don't remember what it was now. I don't know how much it was at the time, but I know an M MCSE now is a couple of hundred dollars. And it was something that I, th I thought that that was really nice of them to do that. Um, but that wasn't the only certification they paid for. They paid for uh, security certifications, VMware, 
They anything that I wanted to get certified in, they were happy to pay for it. Um, as long as I signed a, a waiver, basically that said I would stay for an extra six or 12 months or whatever it was um, to sort of offset my hours against what it cost for them to pay for that certification. I know you're not gonna stay there forever, um, although they, they might like you to, but um, yeah, the more skilled you get, the, the more you get paid, basically. And um, sometimes that happens in an MSP. For me, it didn't. I had to move to a, a, another managed service provider to get paid more from all of the certifications that the previous one had paid for me to do. Um, but you know, it's a dog eat dog world and no one's loyal these days anyway, it doesn't matter. So essentially, if you wanna save yourself a lot of time by learning on the job, so you're going to get paid. Um, most managed service providers pay for like a level one, you're getting about 35,000 Australian. Level two, uh, 45 to 50,000. Level three, 60 to 80,000. And then there's project teams, which are on similar wages to the level three guys. So 80,000 to $90,000, uh, give or take, and depends on what you're doing. Managed service providers these days now have dedicated security teams as well, which is something that you can work your way into. So if you want to go straight out of uh, university or high school, do a few certifications and your degree or just skip the degree and go into a managed service provider, um, start at level one help desk, work your way up to level two help desk, level three help desk, and then you can sort of, at level two, you can also decide if you want to go and do um, like a more supervisor type role. So looking after teams of help desk staff and making sure that they're closing out their tickets and getting their jobs done. Or you can go the technical route and, and keep getting skilled uh, as a technician. Yeah, they're, they're really useful places to go to and a lot of the time MSPs get a bad rap because they are um, a money-making machine. They're there to take calls from their customers, complete the jobs in an efficient and professional way uh, there's a lot of on-site work involved. Sometimes depends what sort of team you get into. Um, I always liked the on-site work, so I always put my hand up if they said, hey, we need you to send you to, I don't know, New Zealand for two weeks. Off you go, here's the job, see you later. And I love that sort of stuff. So that I always took those jobs um, and I sort of had a bit of a reputation as an on-site tech, I guess, at that place. But um, as I said yesterday in my other video, the, my previous experience was all on-site. So I, I was very comfortable doing on-site work, whereas some of the technicians were very uh, introvert and they didn't like going out and talking to people. Um, they, they preferred to stay behind the screen and sort of do their work there. So quick overview, why should you work at an MSP? One, you get really good experience across multiple organizations, sizes and industries. Number two, you get certified by them, they'll pay for your certifications in most cases. And three, it's super fun. You get to work in a team. Um, you won't earn huge amounts of money, but it is a really good learning experience. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a like, subscribe for more, jump on Discord, have a chat if you wanna have a chat with me or any of the other guys and girls on there. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Catch you later. Just don't get too far.